here there is meaning to blossoming and withering flowers. On the coral islands of the South Pacific Ocean, I learn about the simple life of primitive people who adapt to nature all their lives. When asked if they're happy, they always respond with a yes. What makes them so happy? I journey to their world to find the answer to that question. My trip to Vanuatu starts in Auckland, New Zealand and connects to Port Vila, the capital of Vanuatu. I transfer to another flight and land in Espiritu Santo. I look down and see the land covered in coconut palms. Espiritu Santo is famous for its large-scale coconut farms. Anything you plant thrives on this tropical land the coconut is one blessing. You come to value random meetings when traveling alone. Okay. Clean. No. You see? No. Water clean. Okay. No. Oh. A boy takes some water in a bottle. Could he be thirsty? I follow him out of curiosity. Hello. Hello. Copra? Yes. Ah, copra. I like copra. Why do you like copra? I like the smell. Copra. Some people like to make money with this. I like copra. But what's going on now? I'm going to go. Hello. 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 Oh, I can see that. Yeah. It's overheated. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Oh. There's no water. There's a temperature gauge. Hot. Yeah, hot. But you, why are you driving? Forget. You forget? <laughs> hey, man. You water, engine break. So you wait to cool down, and then water. Whether it's a wagon or a car, they don't seem to care much about their rides. The family is relaxed, even though their car is broken down. <laughs> you see? You waiting? And then you see? No, because no. I have got uh, no my chain. No chain? Yes, no chain. Water very clean. Yeah, but you, what about you? <laughs> Too much. <laughs> so we are always happy. Uh. Yes, we never sad. Mm. We always happy in Vanuatu. In Vanuatu. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> <laughs> ah, me. <laughs> Katrina suddenly insists we all gather to take a picture. I pose for the camera, making another precious memory. I would have missed out on the smiles of these simple people if I'd been in a hurry. Espiritu Santo is a pure and spotless island. Nature here has remained pristine and untouched for countless generations. These children are in heaven. I admire the way they readily dive into nature without fear or hesitation. This is a perfect work of nature, which could not have been created by humans' hands. The people find happiness 
in becoming part of nature and being able to rest in its embrace. This is a blue hole. The hollow ground causes the water to look blue, which is where it gets its name. Blue holes can also be found in the rivers of Espirito Santo. The water flows silently through time within a part of nature that's never been spoiled. Vanuatu's current biggest asset is its natural environment. The people here believe their wealth stems from nature and have protected it with their lives. Most people they come here, they see that this is like one of the best in here. Mm. So all the people around here, we respect it. And um, yeah, it's very valuable to the people living around here. Time isn't the only thing that flows. We sail along the calm river in search of another blue hole. The clear water embraces nature and carries everything in its path. Cool and transparent water flows beside me, as if the burdens of this world are being washed away. This river has remained the same in the middle of the deep forest for hundreds of millions of years. It tells me to lay down the burdens I've been carrying and relax in its embrace. The seasons and the way the people live may be different here but it certainly reminds me of the countryside of my hometown. Hello. Hello. Hi. Ah, what are you doing now? Uh, just picking up some coconut for cobra. Ah. To the people of Vanuatu, the coconut is a gift from God. It is a precious tropical fruit. In the 16th century, the Portuguese people discovered coconuts while exploring the tropics and were the ones who named them coconut, which is Portuguese slang for head, since it looks a lot like a human head. Its juice is used as a drink, and its flesh is used to make other things. <laughs> Everything comes at a cost. The valuable coconuts are only harvested with the hard work of the farmers. 
The flesh of coconuts brought from the mountain is dried to make copra. They need to be dried thoroughly for three to four days under high heat in order for copra of high quality to be made. A moment later, three little girls run into their father's arms. These adorable girls are none other than Paolo's gems. They insist on helping him with their tiny hands. All the profit made from copra goes into their school tuition. But Paulo is glad that he can support them this way. It looks like I'm not the only father who's crazy about his daughters. Already five years. So now it's open. Uh, we go up this way. There's plenty gonna crab up here. Coconut crabs were once on the verge of going extinct because they were captured by many people. For this reason, people were banned from catching them. I follow the residents into the deep woods where there are no paths. You see this one, coconut crab. Hmm? Eating this one. Oh. Eating from this end. This one. Okay. Yeah. This one. I think we must find one here. Oh, hang on. Wait, wait. Hey, wait, wait. Hey, look. Oh, look. Oh, oh. This one. Oh. Simon, there's one here. Okay. We find one here. Okay. This one. Okay. This one. We find one here. See? What cup? Hannes, Hannes. Plenty, plenty coconut crab. Ah. Because they put the ban for quite long time. Long time, yeah. yes. And then that's why the coconut crab, they grow big, a big, big. The residents call out from all parts of the woods. Coconut crabs are everywhere. Like they're both uh, exa same. exactly the same, huh? You see this one? This one is small, this one is big, one is small, one is big. Ah. Coconut crabs are surprisingly good at climbing trees. Weighing over 10 kilograms, they go up tree trunks with their strong legs. They may look threatening and dangerous, but coconut crabs are nature's vacuum cleaners, eating dead animals or fruit from the trees. I remember running to my house at sunset when smoke began to rise from the chimney of my home and my mother called me to dinner. There is no more heartwarming sight than that of a mother preparing dinner for her family. <laughs> Naobia displays her excellent cooking skills. She is making lop lop, a traditional Vanuatu meal. People these days live in an economy of money. However, in Vanuatu, where they have a natural refrigerator called nature, the people never starve and are never worried that they don't have money. They just use what nature offers. They take as much as they can eat from nature. That is their sole principle. The family finds food to eat together, prepares it together, and shares it with one another. 
Lump Lop looks quite tasty. It takes a lot of effort and time to make it. Therefore, it's a slow food. There is a reason why they are selling rocks at the marketplace in the first place. Lop Lop is wrapped in banana leaves to be baked on top of heated rocks. Now all we do is wait. After being baked for three to four hours, the Lop Lop is finally ready. In a world where most food can be prepared in a minute using a microwave, this is an unimaginable task. Vanuatu's traditional dish Lop Lop is rather large and smells very savory. It's enough to make one salivate. The family gathers together for dinner. <laughs> To make lap lap. Mm. I, because I, lap lap is big enough for who huge number mm, of people mm. can have it. Mm. Lap lap tastes similar to Korean rice cakes. Mm. Have a seat. I can feel the familial love in this atmosphere. Yes. <laughs> Only one son and plenty Only. daughter. Ah. Perhaps it's because the people here have learned to share with one another and feel content while doing it, which is a lesson they've learned from nature. There's food everywhere. That's right. Yeah. There's food everywhere. Mm. When we, we we never get hungry. Yeah. So most of the time we are so lucky because even though we don't have money, mm. but we still got plenty of food. Mm. Yeah. Keep us strong mm. and alive so that we can mm. still mm. do our work. I head towards a place that's a lot like home and fly from Motalaba to Raw Island. I wouldn't have had the chance to visit this island village if this were a superficial vacation. I traveled a long way to meet the people of a small island that stood firm in the middle of the South Pacific Ocean. Hello. Okay. Yes. Raw Island is a small island not marked on the map, with an area one fourth that of Yoido. consisting of only one village. 200 residents live here all without a front gate. There are crabs hanging in the front yard of every home. Crab? Yeah, crab. What is that for? Uh, local guy to eat. Ah, dinner tonight? Yeah, for dinner, yes. Mud crab, chinook, kerago, yeah, that's right. But it's very delicious. I was eating it, yeah, just, we just get that in the bush. Bush? Yeah. Ah. I follow the villagers who roam the forest, like it's their front yard, to catch some mud crabs. Six years down the road, still no boy bad like ghetto president. A puppy one more dangerous than eggs and the baller combined. The children here have the privilege of learning about nature firsthand, unlike those who live in cities. Six-year-old Dimitri is feeling content after receiving a lot of compliments from the adults. 
I wonder if kids who receive A's in their tests feel as triumphant as Dimitri. Dimitri helps his brothers clean the crabs, even after coming home. Born and raised on a coral island, the children here do their fair share of work, just as nature does. It looks like we'll have a great mud crab dish thanks to Dimitri. Steamed mud crab made with coconut milk. I'm so happy to be in Vanuatu. Look at the amount of flesh in the crab. I'm about to drool. Raw Island is a blessed land. The sea must be the reason why they call this place paradise. Raw Island is a coral island. As with the neighboring islands, coral accumulated throughout the years and became an island. The water is so clear you can see the sea floor. Living creatures swim about in between the coral. The natural environment of the tropics fills the place with abundant life and vitality. Finding treasures in this fishing ground requires no effort. Raw Island is truly fish heaven. It's only been a few minutes, but our sack is already full of sea cucumbers. This is an island that you don't want to leave once you visit, and an island you miss once you leave. In a World Travel magazine, Vanuatu is listed as one of the top 10 travel destinations. I am now headed further out to sea, off the coast of the island. This is a luxury any islander can enjoy. It looks like this man will be having a hearty dinner tonight. The waves of the South Pacific Ocean roll gently and welcome me into their warm embrace. Instead of using a net, the islanders catch fish at leisure using fishing rods. After a prolonged skirmish, everyone gets excited at my big catch. A big fish you would normally catch far out at sea is reeled in close to the coast. I think I've caught another fish. 
This one is hard to reel in. That is a huge fish. This is a blessing you can only find around this island. Nature's alarm goes off and it begins its regular cycle. As the water drains away and more land becomes visible, the distance between the sea and the island becomes narrower and people begin to draw closer to sea. The Republic of Vanuatu. British explorer James Cook named these islands the New Hebrides after a set of islands in Scotland 240 years ago. Uh, octobus. Octobus? Yes. <laughs> nothing? But nothing inside. <laughs> to the people here, Vanuatu means our land forever. In 1980, they gained independence from previous invaders and took back their island and its name. They were able to pass Vanuatu, the land they protected, on to their children. There's nothing special about the daily life of the people here. However, if something suddenly comes up, all the villagers always make themselves available. They put coconut palm leaves together to make a torch. An island without electricity or cell phones. The way to survive on a primitive island is to use what nature offers. Dimitri sits next to a man and carefully watches him for a long time as he makes a torch. He attempts to make one himself. This six-year-old boy has very skillful lands. He must have inherited all these skills to survive on the island village from his father. And they will continue to be passed down as long as Raw Island exists. The island is filled with light on a pitch dark night. People start to dance merrily. And the village becomes a festival ground lit by bobbing lights. I would have never had the chance to experience this precious moment if I had chosen to stay at home on the other side of the world. Watching everyone connect and bond on such a dark night warms my heart. Now, it's time for me to return home. People from the village have gathered to bid farewell. I was telling them that uh, because we love Simon, 
So now Simon will be going back out from our islands. And I was telling female and women that Simon is going back to the boat. Everyone should. The people of Vanuatu are probably the most affectionate people in the world. They are sad to bid farewell to a stranger who came to visit for a little while and shower me with the best parting gift. It's never easy to say goodbye. I look back several times, not being able to move on easily from such a memorable trip. The more technology and civilization advances, the more we want. However, on the primitive islands and untainted land of Vanuatu, I found the meaning of happiness, which I had forgotten until now.